Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 23 of this super amazing, awesome Osu Let's Play series. In the last episode, I showed you guys some cool finger control maps and talked a bit about different ways to train finger control. And in this episode, I want to do something pretty similar, but for aim control. So cursor control, things like that. I'll show you some cool maps that are that involve aim control, and I will talk a bit about just the intricacies as well. So yes, before I get started, I do want to shout out as usual that I live stream every single day over at twitch.tv slash digital hypno. So if you want to see more of me for some reason, hang out with me live or watch me play this game live, anything like that, you can check that out. That will be linked in the description. And bonus points, if you tell me that you came from this Let's Play series, I will be very, very happy to see you there. So yes, without any further ado, so I have five maps picked out for you. And um, before we get started, actually, okay, uh, as usual, if you have been watching the previous episodes, I want you guys to watch my video named OCPHD first. It is a video where I go very in depth into all the different skills in the game, how they sort of connect to each other, things like that. So if you haven't seen that video already, then be sure to pause this one, go check it out. It'll be linked in the description or I'll have the little card thingy. P pretty sure it's called card. <laughs> I, I checked uh, in the YouTube studio, like where you go to add them. I think it's called add card. I don't really think it looks like a card, but, but I, I digress. The, the little thingy that pops up in the top corner. Um, but yes, go watch that video and then come back to this one. And um, I will be here waiting for you. But um, yes, okay, map number one of aim control. So aim control, okay, how do, how do I describe this? So there's aim and then there's aim control, or, or I think it's, I call it cursor control in um, OCPHD. Two, somewhat different things I feel like um actually are they really uh yeah I think so I think like raw aim is hmm, okay I, let me try to describe aim control first and then s sort of see where the difference lies so cursor control I think involves okay two main elements I would say there's like velocity changes and then there's like awkward angles or like unconventional types of angles. So yeah, the maps that I have picked out today, I'll try to point out where there's like strange velocity changes that typically don't appear in like more conventional types of maps or like they require a bit more cursor control than the average map, I would say. So in one of the previous episodes, I mentioned what's called anti-jumps or anti-jumps. It was in episode 17, I think, where I talked about jumps, but um, yeah, stuff like that. Those kinds of patterns, they require a bit more reading as well. And they, oh, but, but they do definitely require more cursor control, aim control. So oh yeah, so these, the parts of this map, oh, okay, so there's these accelerating patterns where like after the acceleration, there's like a big jump or something like that. Oh, I started a shoot. Um, but yeah, I think like velocity changes. Like, this map is very tricky in that sense. It's like very evil. <laughs> Actually, in the in the map description of this map, I think it says like habits are fun to abuse, something like that. I think it, it tries to sort of abuse the typical habits that people have when aiming in this game. Try to make it very tricky. Oh yeah, yeah. little like um, accelerating linear stuff like this. Oh. Oh shoot. Um, yeah, this map is not one that you can play when you're not focused because it is designed to chip you up, I feel like. And plus the smaller CS circle size is uh, not helpful. Um, okay, actually, regarding uh, linear aim patterns, I think that's actually something that a lot of people ask about, like how exactly to get better at aiming linear patterns. And Okay, chunking honestly is I think a big one. It's something that I mentioned two episodes ago. So yeah, definitely check that out. Oh no, yeah, this is a display of, yeah, this map is insane. There's also a map by KTG Stir. I mentioned his maps in a previous episode as well, but very cool mapper. Lots of tricky stuff like this, but yeah, hopefully you guys sort of see what I'm talking about with the whole like, it's just insane. <laughs> um, Okay, but yeah, accelerating, patterns like linear stuff I think chunking and like hitting you can, you can chunk these linear patterns into like groups of two and that can sometimes help um, 
Also, I think your tapping style, yeah, as usual, it, it all goes back to tapping style. You know, in this game, like everything's so connected, especially as I get more into like more complex skills like cursor control. Uh, you'll notice that getting better at one thing involves getting better at something else too, or like things are very, very related. And that's also one of the main ideas that I try to express in OCPHD. So yes, but anyway, I would say tap alting slash single tapping is usually a good way to because you want to be very deliberate with your um, tapping so that you can well be a, a bit more deliberate and controlled in your aim as well so oh, oh okay good, goodbye earring <laughs> um yeah, ho hopefully I'm, I'm not sure if that actually bothers anyone that I, I tend to quit out at the ends of maps if i don't have seen them but anyway um map number two the song is so good i was on carrie's stream earlier today and um he, he's another, I think, Osu content creator, and he was showing me about. Uh, sh he was showing me this map, asking me if I had a score on it, and I was like, "Oh man, I forgot about this map." But this map is so good. So thanks, Kerry. Shout out to Kerry for reminding me about this map, showing it to you guys today. But this map, I think, has a has, has a lot of those velocity changes. I think that I was talking about earlier. Um, you have like two notes that are a certain speed. And then it like it, it just it just changes on you. I don't know. <laughs> well, hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, I think chunking actually is okay. Chunking and focus play really big roles in cursor control. Um, because if you lose focus, it's very easy to just like I don't know what other way to put it than like sort of summarize the the pattern like you. Your brain just makes a TLDR of the pattern, and you just aim that instead of that pattern actually is. And that TLDR skips out on important details. And if the pattern is very complicated to aim, then you're just gonna mess. You're gonna end up messing something up. So, okay, let's see, let's see other things. Okay, so, okay, so those who switch to tablet from mouse, or, or even if you're just a mouse player, um, but I think. Pen stability plays a pretty big role in aim control as well. Like having a very good. What? Wait, what just happened? What? <laughs> um, being able to hold your pen in a very stable way, and also having somewhat flexible pen grip, I guess, uh, plays a pretty big role in aim control as well. <sighs> okay, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> um... Okay. Okay. This is unrelated. This is very uh, underground, under yeah, underappreciated types of ways to improve cursor control. Because there's other videos out there. I'm sure you guys have seen some of those like basic, like how to improve your aim 2021 working glitch hack. <laughs> this is videos like those. Um, but something I want to mention, especially for tablet players. So I think there's this thing, there's like these like fundamental pen control type exercises that like artists do, where it's it's basically just like straight line drawing practice, like practice drawing a straight line in like a digital editing software or something. Um, so uh, let me try to describe this. So uh, th this is something that I have done in the past. So basically you draw two lines in your um, photo editor and or your drawing app so you draw two lines so you basically make a bar uh and then basically you, you want to draw a ladder so you just draw a giant ladder so you have your two big lines and then you draw straight lines um you, you try to make them the same um uh the same width i think if um like if your pen has pressure sensitivity but basically you want every line to look exactly the same you want them to be perfectly straight and you want them to also uh, like be the same spacing from each other so you have your sort of guidelines to make sure they're the same length so you can compare them and then you just draw straight line straight line straight line um i'll show you basically like this um <laughs> hopefully that makes sense i had to pause to explain it and then yeah like quick little rough sketch of it but basically you do that and then once you fill the ladder and you feel you can you can redo it if you want like make a new layer or, um like redo the ladder, but every now and then you rotate the canvas and you rotate it like 15 degrees or something, and then you do it again on like the new rotation. 
and you can basically just like rotate 15 degrees and then draw a ladder and then do it again and eventually you just like rotate 360 degrees and you'll start to notice there's some directions that are so much easier to draw a straight line than others so you find the ones that are most uncomfortable for you and just keep practicing those This is the last notes of the map. Okay, <laughs> I need to. Okay, hopefully there's one map that I don't miss. Um, any notes? Oh wait, okay, this, this map. Oh wait, I have a score on it, but it's with sudden death. So if I want to have the same score, <laughs> uh, if I don't want to submit a new score, then I would have to use sudden death as well. What if I just did? No, actually, no, no, no. Okay, no, bad, bad idea. Uh, this is a very good map, very good song. There's this is more I think introductory aim control. There's some. It, this map is on the slower side, I think. Um, and um. You, you'll, you'll see. It's somewhat conventional, but there's some there's some tricky stuff in this map. Oh, this map is made by Frostmourne. Uh, I think I mentioned Frostmourne in some previous episodes, but yes, I've been meaning to show you some Frostmourne maps. Very, very solid mapper. But, yes, anyway, ho hopefully that demonstration makes sense, or explanation. So basically, like, over time... Okay, this is, this is sample drawing, but basically you rotate it, and then you rotate it again, and you, you just, you just kind of keep doing that. It's like straight line drawing practice. Um, it's underrated way to improve cursor control with, um, I think it, I mostly think of it for like pen stability with like a tablet, but it's probably doable with mouse as well. Um, there's another fundamental type practice that I like giving people for cursor control called auto method. Uh, if you've seen my live streams, like the caught the starts of my live streams, you may have seen me doing auto method because I do it to warm up. Um, but yeah, I, I'll dedicate an, an entire episode to it, but the gist of auto method is that you play like a very low star, like one star map, and something very, very slow, and you try to make your gameplay look exactly like auto mod. So I don't know if I've ever shown auto mod in this Let's Play series. Oh my god, okay, well, I'll, I'll end up showing it off when I make an, an episode about auto method, but uh, yes, basically landing in the middle of every circle and like staying in the middle of the slider ball. Um, and sliders, and moving in a straight line between objects as well. So that is auto method, and there's a lot of little things that it helps with, I would say. This map is so good. <laughs> um, okay, but differences between aim control and raw aim. I think raw aim involves like just straight up like star rating skill cap in that sense, and it's not necessarily about being able to control your cursor with like awkward patterns. Um, like raw, like very good aim can do like conventional patterns very well, uh, like farm maps maybe. Like you might have really really good aim uh, to the point where you can play farm maps that, that are designed to be very conventional and comfortable. But you may have a very hard time with more awkward like velocity changes, weird you know linear stuff like that. Um, and honestly. There's like, okay, I, I feel like I've sort of already mentioned this, but there's a lot of little things outside of just your ability to aim that will improve your aim control by so much. Mostly being like focus. Yeah, focus I think is honestly a big one. And, like your ability to process patterns and like sort of break them down, you know, chunking, stuff like that. I did not know that noise was there. Okay, so much for reading maps, <laughs> processing patterns. Um, but. Yeah, that and I think your tapping style, because if you have a very stream alt like tapping style, then it might be a lot harder to snap to each note and be very deliberate. So keep that in mind. I think mastering the different alternating styles is honestly one of the most underappreciated things that you can do to improve in this game. That and I think like just fundamental focus, being able to break down patterns and understand, understand how to actually play them properly. Very, very underrated. Um, yeah, fundamentals are, are king, to be honest. <laughs> I think that's that's something that goes for any skill as well. But it's hopefully... Also, hopefully my demonstrations of like what exactly constitutes as in control sort of makes sense. Because... Um, I, it's it's sort of hard to describe. I feel like, like what exactly is a pattern that requires more aim control than just, uh, you know, a, a normal, a normal pattern, I guess. 
Um, but I think the key characteristics are velocity changes and um, awkward uh, angles. Also, yeah, yeah, I think awkward angles um, or like unconventional angles. Um, and, and sometimes even like a combination of the two. But let's, let's see. All right, map number four. Number four. This map is so good. Um, actually, should I play the lower difficulty? I do the top one. This one's hard though. So, so there's two difficulties here, just I think full disclaimer. Um, let's, let's just play the top one. <laughs> it's for fun. But th there is an easier version of this song as well. Just a full disclaimer. Oh, oh. Um, okay, that was interesting. Oh, okay, that reminds me. Yeah, it's completely unrelated and un unintentional, but uh, you know the um, Impossible Osu song video by Wobblefolf on the UN Own Was Her? I don't, I still to this day, I don't understand why he got like full 50s and 100s on the first stream and he didn't retry. Like, I just don't understand. He was, he, he was literally recording a video <laughs> and he just got like full 100s and 50s on the first stream and he just kind of kept playing the map and then he ended up with like 97. Just still like the best accuracy on the map. But, like, why did he not retry? <laughs> I never understand. But anyway. All right, so you see a lot of the sort of yeah velocity changes and angles weird angle stuff in this map okay you know what actually this map has a storyboard oh no am i gonna need to okay okay no no i i, just, I forgot to turn this on but i wanted to show you guys the storyboard <laughs> i i feel like if, if i didn't do this probably someone in the comments would have pointed it out but um yes this map is, is very very good i think it won some award or something like that this map i'll, I'll do my best to Play the map properly and talk and have the storyboard on. Um, you know, I'm just a multitasker. Oh, never mind. I'm not a multitasker. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, Th this map actually is a pretty good example of these patterns take a lot of aim control. They it may not be the highest star rating map, but yeah, and, and that's another thing. I think like aim control maps are tricky to aim, but the star rating does not um, capture its difficulty very much. The star rating system favors spacing a lot, like I've mentioned in previous episodes. I think high spacing and I think high speed um, is favored in the star rating system's eyes. So it's like very awkward spacing type stuff. It's very hard for the system to judge like subjective difficulty. Um, it's getting better. It's, it's There's people that are way smarter than I could even pretend to be that are working on making the system better. But yeah, I, at the current moment, it's very hard for the system to know like what angles are considered unconventional. It's just like, wow, this is very big spacing and very fast. So big stars, big star rating. And um, yeah, and that is one other ingredient to the ranking system being as um, abused as it has become over the last few years. Like, you get these crazy scores and it's like, oh wow, no PP at all for that score. I'm sure you, you guys know what I'm talking about. The scores that you're actually proud of and it's like, where's my rank? So sometimes like, like oh gee, how much rank did I gain? And you actually just get like minus one or something. Because <laughs> it just gave you absolutely nothing. So yeah, relatable assume moments. Uh, this map has one third patterns as well. Yeah, um, I think really tricky aim control tends to come in like maps that are also like involve some other skills. I don't think it's necessary that they have one third patterns necessarily, but um, you know, one one third patterns do put a map closer on the scale of unconventional rather than conventional. So. Oh, I can't see the circles. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, this map is so good, though. Very good storyboard. Um, that's good song, good mapping as well, obviously. Um, and okay, definitely. Okay, this actually okay. So all the maps in this episode so far that I'm showing you, I think bank a lot more on tap alting rather than tap stream alting. But I think there's a type of aim control map that really focuses on... Uh, there, there's types of aim control maps that are a lot more tap stream alting focused. Um, those are more like 
alternating, like weird alternating maps um, that have like very awkward like cut streams, things like that. Tap stream alting is what helps with those because you the tapping is just too fast to do tap tap alting, but uh, you still need that sort of deliberateness, and that's where tap stream alting comes into play. Um, also, th those of you who have like watched every episode and heard me talk about the different types of alternating and still don't completely understand the differences, um, hopefully, uh, I I really wish there was a better way to explain them, but I don't feel like there is. But um, maybe one day I'll make a video with like just my like, a camera on my tapping hand, and I'll try to explain like. I, I don't know, I, I'm so determined to figure out how to explain it because I feel like it's so important, but anyway, hopefully for the most part. And I, I've linked sample videos, I think, in the description of episode 6. If you're really confused on tap alting, especially, or no, tap stream alting, there's some sample videos in the description of episode 6. So, um, yes, okay, this map I did already have a score on, so I can at least get to the result screen in at least one map. I, actually... Uh, no, I, I, I have seen the last map too. Anyway, anyway. Alright, one more map that I want to show you guys. Let's see, let's see. Alright, this one's on the shorter side. This map is also very good. This map set, I think, was made for a mapping contest or something like that. Um, yeah, whenever you see, like, the word winner or something like that after a difficulty name. So basically, all or most of the difficulties in this map set were made for a contest. And then they were, like, judged and... and like voted on by some pe <laughs> people looked at them and gave them like a, a grade and then whoever map got like the best grade ends up winning the contest um honestly i think the, all the maps here are pretty good and uh, i'm, I'm going to show you this one i think this one has some tricky aim control stuff but all the maps in this maps are pretty good i would say but let's see and any last bits about aim control um that is a good question oh um i think pen okay so like wh whatever grip you use whether it's like on your pen or your mouse you want it to be very flexible i would say because if your grip is not flexible then you're gonna run into issues with like reaching certain corners of the screen maybe or like certain angles in certain quarters corners of the screen or like um one side of the screen you might be very comfortable on, and the other one maybe not so much. It's a, hard, a lot harder to control your aim. Um, some general bits of advice for that. I would say there's more to aim than just like the way that you hold your pen or your mouse, I guess. Um, there's also like, okay, actually, I'm, I'm a lot more accustomed to um, like tablet advice for stuff like this, but. Basically, oh yeah, I'm just going to describe for tablet and then probably most of the concepts will apply for mouse as well. But like how high up you hold your pen also plays a pretty big difference. Or like how low, like how close to the tip you hold your pen. And let's see, other, other things. I think like your pivot point, okay, so there's something called a pivot point for your um, aim, aim hand. It's basically like the, the point at which you like stabilize. Um, so it could be like your wrist, for example, or your elbow, if you're resting your elbow on your armrest or something like that. It's, it's basically the yeah the, the point that sort of keeps your aim hand stable. And I think you're making sure your pivot point is very flexible is very important. I think I, I see some people that just like have their entire hand on like the side of their hand on their tablet, for example. Uh oh, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Very good map though. Okay, yeah, real quick, I want to finish this explanation. So, like, if you have your entire side of your hand on your tablet, for example, um, it's it can sometimes be very hard because you can't move it around a lot. Versus, like, if you just use the sort of like ball bit of your wrist, I don't really know what to call it. Like the fr freaking okay, I, I I don't know what to call it, but basically, like some parts of your wrist, like the the side of your wrist, basically. Um, like you can roll around your hand a lot more and, and be a lot more flexible and you can move around both your fingers and also your your hand slash wrist as well you can be a lot more flexible I, I think that is really important when it comes to aim control so yes or alternatively you could use your elbow like if you have an armrest or something or or even like if you you can just like rest your 
like the side of your arm on your desk if you don't have like an armrest or something. And you can just move your entire hand around your tablet. I think for people with larger tablet areas, that's a lot more effective or like with very low DPI on their mouse, mouse sensitivity. Um, this can be anything. I would say fair warning, do not use your shoulder as a pivot point because then that might end up with you like tensing up your shoulder a lot and, and that can cause issues or like pain, things like that. But um, yes, anyway, with that, hopefully those explanations somewhat made sense. And I'll definitely be touching on these concepts as well in future episodes because these are very, very fundamental type things. And then also, as usual, check out OSU PhD, which is um, where I sort of have explained these things in a much more structured way. <laughs> um, but yes, with that, thank you guys for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you're watching in the future, definitely check out my channel, watch my future episodes because I upload these every single day. And also, as I mentioned, please uh, stop by my Twitch stream where I stream every single day as well. Be very, very happy to see you guys there. But yes, with that, I will see you guys next time.